There are many humans who do not conduct research and may have no idea of hypotheses or conducting research. How can the rest of us feel okay with so many unknowns in life? Well, I think most, I don't know how many humans are out there being uncomfortable with unknowns. I think it's a small percentage. I think the majority of, of humans are content with their everyday existence. And by content, that doesn't mean that they're overjoyed or that doesn't mean they're disappointed. It means that everything is okay. The people seeking the knowledge, people who do not, are wanting to know the unknown are people who seek knowledge. So the way to deal with the unknown is continuing to learn. That's the, and then they, you might not, you know, you might not know all the research terms, but reading a lot of books about the same thing and then drawing a conclusion based on all of those books is research. That's what research is. And the problem with research, though, the bottom line is that research is colored by our personal experiences. So the number one thing people can do is recognize when their personal experiences is coloring the data, meaning that their personal lives, their um their experiences, their belief systems, ultimately create a lens that changes the way they see things. So the more people start to understand how they are coloring their own data, the more that discovering the unknown will be easier because they are, they are recognizing what it is about themselves that is coloring the way that they see the future. Okay, I see. Thank you. Um, how can humans know the difference between their own intuition and what is a trauma response? Trauma response feels hot. Trauma responses feel, so if you think of the word response, right? So it's a reaction. Mm -hmm. um, and, and usually, re, not always, but a lot of reactions. Think of it as like friction. Mm -hmm. Friction it creates heat. So a trauma response is friction with um, the current situation. So mm -hmm. if there's a heat feeling, if there's heat, then that's usually a trauma response. Intuition tends to be cooler and more of a soothing, um, like knowing. But trauma tend, tends to create heat. Thank you. That's very helpful. <clears throat> How can humans use our fullest potential with the limitations of our human form? Recognizing our biases, like nothing is going to happen when we are walking wounded. Um, the more that you, we start to unpack how our experiences color our way of looking at the world, uh, the more we start to realize that we are just responding and reacting to things that might not even be currently happening. So, um, just recognizing and unpacking whatever, it doesn't mean it's bad. Our, our past experiences are past experiences. They're not inherently bad. But if you think about something like um, racism, mm -hmm. that is a learned behavior that this, that, that our, you know, much of humanity was, is currently steeped in. Because that's how structures exist. It's it's a part of their our embedded structures right now. Mm -hmm. Recognizing how we think about things and how it does affect the way we look at things is what's important. The problem is is when people don't recognize that there is a specific lens they are looking through. When people claim that there is no lens, kind of like when people are like, "I don't see color." That's that's you, that's not true. You do see color because mm -hmm. unless you are colorblind, like you mm -hmm. do see that people have different shades of skin. So that is not, that is, that is claiming that you don't have a lens that you are looking through when we all do and recognizing what that lens is, where it comes from and how it's shaping and either positively impacting or harming our current situation. Thank you. Thank you. How can humans release big emotions safely? Uh, they just have to be willing to do it. Um, I think that it's, it's the willingness. It has to be willing. Nobody wants to feel big emotions. 
Mm -hmm. That's not fun. So when you're willing to do it, so Mm -hmm. it's almost like when you fight the big emotion is when it becomes a problem. Because what happens, it's like a dam, right? So when when you keep pushing things in front of it so it doesn't come out, it pressure builds. If every single time someone was angry, they owned it and released it in that moment, it wouldn't be a big deal. It's because things get pent up. These big emotions get get pent up and backed up, and that's where things happen because it hasn't been expressed in the moment. We can get angry about little things all day, and if we fully experience that anger and release it in the time it happens, then we would just get, it's a skill. It's a skill to practice to get there. So being willing to deal with big emotions is how you manage them. Yeah. How can we channel these big emotions into something that's useful? Same thing. We have to be willing to to re- be willing to do the work. So emotions, like I said, it's like a dam, right? They dam up. They dam up our creativity. They prevent us from moving forward. So simply the willingness to feel them will allow us to open up a space to to be more creative or to be more helpful or to be more whatever words you want to use. Emotions are are emotions that are not expressed, emotions that are not felt, emotions that are repressed is like damming up an energetic flow. So by being willing to feel them, then we create space for our brains to be creative. Now, children don't always learn how to do this as children. Or sometimes children learn to stuff down their feelings. Can this be taught as an adult? Yeah. It, again, it comes back to willingness. You have to be teachable. You have to want to do it. Um, the majority of people are content with where they're at. Um, and if somebody isn't will, you can't force anybody to do this work. It has to be individual, which is why nothing big will ever change because everybody has to be willing to do that work and you cannot force that work. You cannot force willingness. Um, you cannot force reflexivity. And until people are in enough pain that they want to change, they won't change. Mm-hmm. Thank you. <clears throat> so that naturally leads to my next question about the human experience. What role does this painful human experience have in ascension? You have to be willing. You have to be willing. So, so that seems like the, the word is willing. Um, you have to be willing to be feel fully human. And to be fully human is to feel the full range of emotions. If you think about what separates human from animal, humans are animals. But why are they different, right? What makes things different? I'm not saying animals don't experience emotions because I'm pretty sure that they do. But the wide range of human emotions, all of them, um, is, is the human experience. So if you're not willing to sit in all the stuff, all the stuff, mm-hmm. um, then you'll never fully be human. You won't. Now, does it happen? Is it, does it happen in every lifetime? No. It might be one lifetime you learn to manage one emotion. Or one lifetime is you're not dealing with emotions. You're dealing with survival. But the, the full human experience is is to deeply feel um, and not let it swallow you whole and to feel and to release and to feel and release and feel and release. It's supposed to be movement. It's supposed to be um, fluid. And it's what it's become is that we feel and then it's almost like we create a little like case around that. And then we feel again and we create another case. So we just have this thick layer of of, uh, protectiveness around an emotion and this emotion is like a ticking time bomb and it could be any emotion there's tons of them it could even be joy Mm -hmm. but if we don't feel if we're not willing to feel that fully and we have to fill it in small feel it in small chunks to feel it all at once again when you store it deep down when you open it it's all going to come flooding out so the more you feel it on the day to day and practice like feeling them as they come and then releasing them as they come, it's like a in and out movement. It's like a it's like the tide. It comes in and then it comes out, right? So mm-hmm. feelings come in, we feel them, we recognize them, we own them, and then it needs to move out. It's when they so. But think about the tide. If it just kept coming in and coming in mm-hmm. and coming in, mm-hmm. we drowned. Mm-hmm. So learning that that to move with the tide 
is this, you know, is to move with our emotions. Okay. So once we reach ascension, what becomes our emotional experience? On earth or in general? In general. So ascension implies that, you know, that we are beyond earth. So to be on earth is to be human. You cannot ascend and be human. They're not the same thing. So being a human is a different experience than ascending. We can we can understand that there's movement between realms, but that Earth is essentially a messy, dirty place with big emotions. There's no way to get past that as a human. So there's no way to be a human and not experience that. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> How can we be content with the human experience when we know that more is possible for us? Um, it's willingness. Willingness mm -hmm. to just, and even just accept, it's acceptance. It's recognizing that this is what being a human is and being okay with it, no matter how bad it sucks. Um, it's, 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 it's willingness. I, and I acknowledge that I'm a human and this is what being a human is. And it means this, 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 and this. And I am fully accepting of that experience right now on Earth. Okay, thank you. Of course. Um, and then I have a question about the emotion of rage. This is a very difficult emotion for humans. How can we safely release rage? We need to let kids throw fits. Mm -hmm. So, we experience at a very young age right that so our our toddlers are perfect examples of humans in their purest form you want to see the purest form of a human hang out with the toddler they experience all the emotions they will go from crying hysterically to laughing hysterically to falling asleep like they do it all they are the perfect encapsulations of the human experience our toddlers mm -hmm. ages two to four and we as a society shut it all down we want them to be quiet. We want them to sleep. We want them to not make messes. We want them, we want, we try to fit children into an, a human world at a very young age, or as an adult world at a very young age. We have got to let kids feel their feelings, no matter how uncomfortable it is for adults. And we have to let, teach them to do it safely. When you shut down a four-year-old screaming about wanting something and not having it, there's a difference between like, letting them you know again we want them to be able to safely experience that but they're not going to again it's bottled up right it's a bottled up situation mm -hmm. but if you have a kid that it if you're in walmart and your kid wants a toy and they don't get it and they're crying and pissed and screaming then you promptly pick them up you take them to the car you open the car let them in the car and let them throw their fit and let them feel their feelings and assure them that you are there for them and that when they are done, that you are happy to help them. And how can you help them right now feel these big feelings? Letting kids feel them at a young age, when we shut that down when we're young, we are teaching them that those that way of feeling is not okay. When we hit kids that are throwing a fit, we are teaching them that when we, they feel certain feelings, they will be punished for it. When we ignore kids, when we, when we do, when we do give them punishment for feeling big feelings, we are just, we are taking the human experience away from them. Thank you. Is there anything else that we need to know about the human experience or how we move through it? Well, nobody really does it well because that's part of being a human mm -hmm. so there's no way to really perfect it because being a human is imperfect so just the acceptance of that this is what humanity is that doesn't mean we can't strive for better in every situation but also knowing that this is what humanity is and until we figure out a way to let people fully experience the full range of emotions that happen as a as a human and teach them as a young age how to experience that the problem is is that if you teach a little four-year-old right now how to feel their feelings they grow up to an adult and what's going to happen is that they're going to be at a meeting with their boss and they're going to go and the boss is going to say something and that child has been trained to feel their feelings and express it right so the boss is going to say something and that person across from the boss is going to go 
that was really hurtful to me and I really need some time to process this and I can't be around you right now and walk out. Does that work in a workplace? No, because that's not how our society is set up. We don't set up to for people to fully express their emotions because it mm. makes most of us uncomfortable. So until we create a societal structure that allows for that and that we don't have a lot of hierarchies that basically shut that conversation down, nothing we we will continue where we're at. 